Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Matt Erbach. This is Streamwood High School. Um, what I'm going to hopefully show you guys today is how to do execute tool changes on a Haas desktop mill. Um, up until now, everything I've been seeing on some of the forums, the HEC forum, etc., people are doing sort of like one tool codes, one tool programs, and it's because basically there's no there's a couple of a couple of pitfalls that um, I think most people are uh, running into when they're trying to do a multi-tool uh, project or process. So what you're seeing right here is the project that I'm going to be working on. It is uh, it's this little guy here. It's the belt clip to an ID holder. Okay. Now the idea behind this ID holder is um, we're going to make both parts of this, both the um, the casing and the clip, uh, in a single fixture on our desktop. I'm setting up the fixturing for that as we speak, but everything you see here, I have run successfully using multiple tools on a desktop mill. So um, basically, uh, you can see here, I've got a facing operation that's with a, a one inch router, um, like a rabbiting bit. Um, I've got a quarter inch end mill to do an adaptive clearing and a hole drill. I've got an eighth inch end mill to do a cleanup uh, and get into all my pockets and do, you know, hog everything out finish to finish size. And then we've got a chamfer to do a deeper and that's hold number one. Uh, there's going to be three total holds on this part. Um, now, this is just a conventional Fusion 360 layout. This will work on an inventor as well. Um, you just have to, um, you know, again, you got to be able to get your tool pass into either one. So standard tool pass, standard feeds and speeds. Your project is identical to what you're going to see on Titans or anything else up to this point. Um, but where it's going to differ is when I go to post, I need to use a post that uh, we have here that's a little bit unique, OK? Um, I've got this one up here right now. This is how it's listed on my computer. We have submitted this post to Autodesk for uh, inclusion in their library. So you might have to go to the Autodesk library and download a post specifically for the, for the desktop mill. Uh, this one here, it's going to do a bunch of things that um, the regular post won't do. OK, um, I'm just going to give it a number here. All right, so a couple of things that this post does. By the way, this post was created by um, South Elgin High School's Mr. Russ Bartz. Uh, it's absolute work of genius. This is awesome. I've been working with him on trying to get this thing moving, and so far, so good. Um, what I'm showing here is, um, for example, a uh, line here, N25T1M0. Normally, during your tool change, it's going to throw an M6, and the M6 is going to lock up your desktop mill. Your desktop mill doesn't understand what a tool change is because it doesn't have a tool changer. Okay. There's a number of other things like here, like your feed rates, uh, that it's not changing. So the G0, it automatically converts the feed rate into, um, you know, like a, a F, a G1 with a, with a feed rate um, instead of going to full rapid. And it, for some reason, defaults to 500 inches per minute which is more than the desktop mill is capable of processing. So it errors out there as well. So the post basically eliminates a lot of those problems. The tool changes, um, let me go down to one of them. Let's see, 17, there we go. Um, the tool changes are all gonna look the same way. I have a tool listed, but it's, it's going to an M0, which means it's not actually executing a tool change, it's executing a program stop. So when you hit this, obviously it's gonna stop the machine and prompt you, well, it's gonna stop the machine and you have to change a tool in order to move on. So um, that's all I can really show you guys here. Save this, uh, save your code to a USB drive using the post I showed you, and uh, we'll get to the machine next. Okay, um, one important thing to note, uh, when you're on here and you, when you're using the post that we, uh, that, that Russ wrote, um, or the post that I'm assuming will be presented on Autodesk is, um, we need to make one change. We need to basically disable the H and T code equalizer or the equalization between, in other words, in other words, the assumption that the H code and the tool code match. Okay. To get there, we're going to go to settings and we're going to go, um, up here to program. And the first thing on here is H&T code agreement. Uh, as a stock feature on the machine, it's listed as on. Um, I need to make sure it's off, okay? Along those lines, uh, my tools. I have loaded uh, a series of tools. Um, I'm gonna show you the tools in a minute. But um, 
you can see here that uh, each of my tools I have set up a proper offset for, and that's my H code, obviously. Um, and basically, I need that to be correct. I need to touch these tools off in the proper way that you would on any other machine, simply to facilitate having an adequate H code that matches the uh, matches the output uh, of the tool or matches the length of the tool. All right. So next step, tool prep. Um, You'll notice here, I have purchased uh, multiple collet nuts. These are ER11 collet nuts and multiple collets so that I don't have the inconvenience of having to disassemble everything every time I want to just do one tool change. All of my tools have a, um, a shaft lock attached to them, okay? The shaft lock allows me to basically pull it out of the machine and then load it back in and hold an overall tool length so that I can, again, execute uh, tool changes without a lot of drama. It just happens to be really nice to have all this connected together where you're literally dropping this whole rig out collet and all for another another item. So these are the four tools I'm going to use. This is a um, a quarter, it's a, it's a one inch diameter rabbiting cutter. It's a quarter inch thick. Thickness doesn't really matter. I'm using this as, as a substitute for a face mill. I've got a high helix, you know, optimized for aluminum quarter inch end mill, an eighth inch end mill of the same, and a eighth inch uh, 90 degree chamfer cutter. Um, my material here, uh, whether it's black or white, is Delrin, simply because it works. Uh, this machine doesn't have a lot of horsepower, so uh, we're using what we can. Uh, along those lines, um, to compensate for our lack of horsepower, we are using these things at typically a much, much lighter depth of cut and a much, much higher uh, RPM. Okay, next up, I'm going to try to run this thing. I got my part loaded up in my vise. I've got my first cutter, a first tool present. Close it up. My program's loaded. Okay, it just basically comes to uh, an M0, it comes to a stop. I've got to unload my tool. Also worth mentioning while I'm doing this, this actual drive shaft here, uh, when I got the machine new, uh, there was a little bit of a burr on it that was affecting my ability to load tools quickly. Once I found it, it really became a lot easier to get these things in and out quite fast. Um, it is worth mentioning too that I set all these in my tool library in sequential order.
Okay, drilling operation. I did it with a heavy pack because I was trying to avoid the material uh, sticking to the bit. Okay, next cutter change. Eighth inch finishing pass or eighth inch cutter with a finishing pass. You can see we're relatively burr free, um, but I did want to put a slight chamfer on the edge. Uh, so I did do a final operation of a chamfering cutter. I'm gonna load that up right now and show you that last option. I'm actually hitting cycle start twice because I've got it on option stop, so it's got to clear the op stop as well as the M0. Um, I was discussing it with my colleague, Mr. Bartz, the gentleman who wrote the, uh, the post for this, and we were much more comfortable with the idea of us um, running the machine with uh, a, a double bump for the cycle start because we're just so used to not having to change cutters in between ops. All right, it's just taking a little five thou pass off here, real gentle. And that is the code and the part.